Hello everybody, man, they're all here, and welcome to the weekly update video for OSRS. Now, last week there wasn't an update. Uh, the reason behind that is because the servers were having issues, and they were just starting to get certain ones up. Some of them actually got up before uh, the... Well, before they had thought they'd be able to. So, given the situation, they didn't want to put any more strain on the servers. Um by releasing an update in the midst of also the recovery uh now for those who are wondering yes the uh issue was on the server side but it was a provider issue uh so it wasn't necessarily jagged studios that was the issue however they have not released a full um you know update as to what all happened yet we may or may never see that but that is what is going on so this week we see what was supposed to happen last week, plus this week's updates. So quite a bit of stuff going on. Uh, but there was some issues today. Uh, so at 1415 uh, GMT, they were seeing reports of some players experiencing issues so using the teleports from jewelry box, mounted skill capes, and Nexus portal. That has been fixed. And at 1555 GMT, they received reports that charged items are losing all of their charges upon completing one action that has been fixed. However, there is a one that is ongoing, and they heard various reports of issues found in the new Tombs of Amasket combat achievements, including the achievements being completed by some members of a group, but not everybody. So this is an ongoing fix. Uh, the team has currently investigating these uh, achievements not being received by all members could be due to the 10 second after starting rule. Uh, they had implemented, meaning you need to be inside the main part of the room within 10 seconds of entry. Uh, they haven't made this very clear in game, so the team is looking to, to making this visible by adding it to the overview section of the various Tombs of Masked Combat achievement pages. Uh, they fixed a couple of the issues regarding the TOA combat achievement, so uh, being able to complete the Akhant I can't do it. <laughs> I can't say it. Uh, at level Akka 1. Or well, level 1 Akka. Uh, simultaneous completion and failure messages for the perfect Mepkin. Uh, completing you are not prepared without taking items from the Helpful Spirit. Uh, using some tier 75 plus equipment still allowed. But damage. Uh, well, but damage completion. So, chain log for November 30th. So, we have a big chain log here. Uh, there is the Garden of Death. Uh, so, in the newest Twisted Tale, you piece together the long-lost language and unravel the mystery of some ancient ruins. So, welcome to uh, the Garden of Death. So, as you can see here, uh, this is actually... Ah, I forget the name of the kingdom. Uh, but this is near the Cabo, well, this is in the Cabo Slowlands, near the Lizard Settlement. So this is, this is actually one of my favorite areas, to be honest, in OSRS, I will say that. Uh, but, <clears throat> head there, uh, it's directly south of the L Lizard Settlement when you go across the Southern Bridge. Uh, just keep heading south, uh, once you get to the, well, once the road starts heading west, uh, just keep heading south and a little bit more southeast and you'll get there. But there's also improved experience rewards from Master and Grandmaster quests. So beneath Cursed Sands, Master is 20k agility. The new XP is 50k agility. So Purdue, who can be found in several locations. So this is something, if you have already completed it, you can go back and actually claim this. Uh, Desert Treasure, Master... I don't understand why this is even listed since it's unchanged. But it says 20k magic to 20k magic. So why even list it? And a dream mentor is the same thing. Of uh, It's just combat XP that is supposedly changing. Uh, the Fremenic Isles though. They have some changes here. The Master. Uh, so it's going from 15k Slayer crafting and 5k Runecraft up to a 50k slayer 50k craft 30k rune craft uh again go see purdue who can be found in several locations <coughs> uh grim tail it's uh changing uh the wood cutting agility thieving herbler um 
and the farming XP, not the hit point XP, is all changing. So head to Purdue again for that one. Uh, Legends Quest of XP and four skills is going from 7.65k all the way up to 30k in all four skills. So there you want to talk to Radimus Urkel in the Legends Guild. Uh, the choice is limited to attack, defense, strength, hit points, prayer, magic, woodcutting, crafting, smithing, herb lore, agility, and thieving. Uh, making friends with my arm is mining, agility, fire making, construction. Uh, they're going up, all going up quite substantially, so if you complete it, head to Purdue. So basically, most of these you head to Purdue, it looks like. Monkey Madness. <laughs> the quest is, it gives no XP itself, instead XP can be gained by post-quest by talking to Darrow. Uh, this XP won't be consumed as it's combat XP. Morning's End, uh, Part 1 Master, it is thieving uh, XP that you'll be primarily beginning. So again, talk to Purdue, uh, Morning's End Part 2. It's Agility XP going from 20 to 60k. So this is why I'm saying guys, go to Purdue and get your XP from all this stuff. Uh, Night at the Theater, it is a master, now it was a 3 times 20 k XP lamps, it is now a 4 times 20 k XP lamps, uh, but talk to the mysterious stranger outside the theater, Blood, uh, they will be giving you another lamp. Uh, Sins of the Father, uh, very similar, instead of 3 times 15 k tomes, it is now going to be 6 times 15 k tomes, and go and talk to Ivan Strom. Outside of the Meyer Ditch Marquet hideout. Well, inside of it, I should say. Uh, Swan Song, uh, there is fishing XP you can get from it, so do check that out for Purdue. A Dragon Slayer 2 Grandmaster, you can get smi uh, yeah, smithing, mining, agility, and thieving. So talk to Purdue Monkey Madness 2. Uh, you'll be getting Slayer, agility, thieving, and hunter. Purdue again. And Song of the Elves, you'll be getting agility, construction, farming, herb lore, hunter, mining, smithing, woodcutting. Talk to Purdue. And then we have the Mysterious Quest. Uh, you'll be getting agility, thieving, and hunter. Uh, this is currently unreleased. As far as who to claim it from. Uh, which is very strange. But, uh, all these things are going up by anywhere from... 20 to 40k XP, so do check it out. It could have an impact on you. Uh, combat Achievement Reward Expansion. So they are expanding a little bit. Easy. 100% uh, bonus warrior tokens from the Warriors Guild. Gain one additional Void Knight combination point per game of Pest Control. The upper limit for boss slayer task unlocked with like a boss perk is increased from 35 to 40. A medium 200% bonus warrior tokens from the Warriors Guild. Note that these rewards are cumulative, meaning you'll have to complete both the easy and medium tiers for the 200% bonus listed. Uh, the same rule applies to any other rewards that increase per tier. So the Void Knight is uh, gain two additional Void Knight combinations per game. So again, need to complete previous tiers. No longer affected by the prayer gene effect at Burrows while Gamal, Gamal's hilt is equipped. That is awesome. Your cannon can hold up to 35 cannonballs. The upper limit for the boss slayer task, unless with the like a boss, is going from 35 to 45. Hard and abuse the nightmare zone and souls wars cost 50% fewer points. Gain three additional void knight accommodations per game. Cannon can now hold 45 cannonballs. Kill count required to access the bosses of the God Wars dungeon is reduced from 40 to 36. And the upper limit for boss slayer uh, with the like a boss is going from 35 to 50. The elite uh, bracelets of slaughter now have a 10% chance to fully recharge instead of breaking. And expeditions bracelets now have a 10% chance to fully recharge instead of breaking. Superior slayer mustard drop rates increase from 1 to 1 in 150. Cannon can now hold up to 60 cannonballs. Uh, kill count required to access the God Wars dungeon is going from 40 to 30. The upper limit for boss slayer task with like a boss is going from 35 to 55. And then we go into master. Thralls resurrected via Arceus spells last 50% longer. Gamal's hilt 5 can now be combined with the Avernic Defender for a cosmetic upgrade. 
kill count required to access the bosses in Guzz War Dungeon is reduced from 40 to 25. The upper limit for the boss slayer task with like a boss is going from 35 to 60. Unlock a new ammo slot item, uh, Gamal's Lucky Penny, which gives a 5% chance to not consume charges from items such as jewelry, offhand equipment such as Tim of Fire, or when worn as the with charged weaponry such as the Trident of Seas or the Sights of Vitor. And then we go into Grandmaster. Thrall's resurrected via Arceus spells last 100% longer. Gamal's Halt 6 can now be combined with the Abernick Defender for a cosmetic upgrade. And Kill Count has been, for the God of War's Dungeon, gets reduced from 40 to 15. And the Boss Slayer task with Like a Boss gets 35 to 65. And you got the Tombs of Masked achievements. So speaking of the combat achievements there, they've added nearly 50 to the Tombs of Masked. So do check those out. <laughs> That's quite a bit. <clears throat> poison Dynamite. So most people are familiar with the Poison Dynamite after the offer in Pole 76. But for poll, for people who aren't familiar with this, uh, the Skilling Pure uh, secure kills when necessary without gaining combat XP. Players can now use the fire making skill at level 50 or above to craft untradeable poison dynamite from one dynamite and three cave night uh, cave night shades. And here is an example of this uh, going on right here. Uh, they are using the dynamite on the guard. It explodes, hits the guard, and they are now poisoned. The initial damage is not much, but the poison is substantial at lower levels so once assembled simply place the dynamite on the ground and light it as you would a pile of logs to deal a damage in a three by three area for a more precise attack you can also stick the dynamite to your target using it on them so using the poison poison dynamite in either fashion will net you a bit of fire making experience so after five ticks the poison dynamite will explode dealing a damage between zero to six uh, deals with uh, skills with your fire making level if the explosion hits it will have a 25 percent chance of poison the target poison damage begins at six so it's not bad uh the dynamite's damage roll is based on selected combat stance so enemies weak to range are more likely to take damage from the explosion if you're holding a bow instead of a shimitar something to kind of keep in mind uh, the damage is the same type of your current equip too, so if you're attacking an enemy that's immune to a certain damage type, watch what you're wielding. Uh, you can deploy uh, one piece of dynamite at a time, sensible, uh, and only one poison dynamite can be active on any given square. This means multiple accounts are unable to stack their explosives, explosions on the same square. Uh, additionally, you'll be able to hit a single target even if the 3x3 explosion is in a range of several NPCs. One final thing, the Tzahara have forbidden the po lighting the poison dynamite within the fight caves, so won't be able to quite use it there. So behind the scenes, there's a section, this is usual and this is an old rule here. This section was originally written to be included in November's 23rd game update. And does it include the service outages due to Tuesday, November 22nd? So, uh, but they would like to thank everyone for their patience. The team is still committed to delivering their make good plan. So they will have more news to share about that tomorrow, at least for OSRS. Now for RS3, we will potentially have to wait and see a little bit longer. Uh, but they got some good news. They are currently expect to upgrade the Australian and U.S. Westworlds before the Christmas. Well, before Christmas, only one month away now. Uh, on December 6th, uh, maintenance will take uh, place between 1030 and 1330 GMT. For U.S. Westworlds, it'll be 1400 to 1700 for the Australian worlds. So 1030, well, 1030 yeah, to 1330 for U.S. West, 1400 to 1700 for the uh, Australian worlds. Uh, but they're also looking to tackle the U.S. East worlds in January 2023. Uh, but it is subject to change, so keep that in mind. Uh, mobile client, so good news. Uh, the Ace mobile team has figured out a solution for the black screen issue players were having 
uh, been experiencing on movable platforms. Unfortunately, in fixing the problem, uh, they had to depreciate support for the OpenGL ES 2.0. So devices that do not support OpenGL ES 3 or higher will no longer work with the mobile client. Uh, if your device is not supported, you will see a black screen for around 5 to 10 seconds before the game crashes. If your device is supported and you're still experiencing these black screen uh, or any other problems, please do send the report. And then we have the poll 77 changes. So players who have completed Monkey Madness 1 may now return to Ape Atoll to complete Monkey Madness 2 without accepting Dyer's training. They will have to complete both Duke and Dirt's training in order to use the Heavy Ballista. Uh, please also note that the Colormancer's Gloves beyond Mithril tier have their own defense level requirements, so one defense account will still be able to use the Adamant Gloves. Well, yeah, well, so one defense account will still be unable to use the Adamant Gloves. I should re-read that. Clue scroll drop rates uh, boosts earned from the combat achievements now applied to the Hallowed Sepulchre uh, and chests in the Shades of Morton minigame. Iron players may now buy and sell ores at a fixed price from Orden's shop when it's overstocked. This means that if the player that if the shop shop stock is under 100, the price will increase as normal. But if the shop uh, stock is over 100, they'll pay a static price for this uh, rather than getting discounts. That a non-iron player would be getting for overstocked items. Additionally, Orden Shop will now reset its contents uh, towards a default stock 100 uh, faster than before. Players can now set their default player in house to teleport to building mode from the player in house settings. All the usual restrictions will still apply, meaning this option will only work or won't work. Uh, if there's already guests inside the player in house, or if the player has a follower. So, if you have somebody in the house or you have a follower, you can't do it. Uh, players can now disable confirmation messages for charter ship payments. To do so, open the settings menu and navigate to the warnings and scroll down to confirmations, where you'll find a new toggle. Charlie the Tramp has embraced the phrase, beggars can't be choosers, it will now allow players to bring him requested items, uh, well, requested items required by any means. So this means that players doing beginner clue scrolls can fetch his favorite items direct from their own bank, buy traded other players, or buying from in-game shops instead of having to craft the items themselves afterwards, after getting that, you know, stuff. Other changes. So, Portals of Perfitness uh, Agility course are now highlighted like any other obstacle for players using the C++ client. Dragon Defenders were unusually easy to lose on death, considering how long they take to reobtain. Uh, they bumped up their value, so now they're prioritized higher for death protection purposes. Of course, there's always the alternative solution. Just don't die. Uh, players can now light fires near the bank in Nexus Antechamber. Uh, this should give the Ultimate Ironman players an opportunity to rustle up some scre uh, scran and extend their trips. Uh, this is too exciting for locale. Uh, Shadow Spiders will no longer drain the player point. Yeah, player points. Prayer points of innocent bystanders and will instead only use the ability when players they are in direct combat with. You will now get full XP from helping your throne of miscellaneous, miscellaneous citizens uh, when fishing, uh, mining, and wood cutting. You can now toggle off the confirmation screen, which appears upon paying to protect your crops. Pressure Worlds players can now set, uh, start public Soul War lobbies uh, with just two players per team as opposed to the usual 10 players per team. PvP combat is now blocked on the Tombs of Masket on Dead Man Worlds as it is for other raids. Uh, there's enough danger in the tombs without friends turning on you. And RuneFest 2014 and 17 plus the Premier Club 2018 rewards are now unlocked by default for everyone. So hopefully uh, everybody enjoys that. And in case you missed it, uh, there is this year's Winter Summit is a little over two weeks away, uh, which will be taking place at 2000 GMT on December 10th. So do check out a little bit things of things going on. 
Uh, you can catch Eapscape's Battle Royale, where you can check your favorite creators face off for their chunk of the 15k prize pool. So do check that out. Of course, there's also the gold and gnome winner of Hootie Tootie. So do check that out. Uh, there is an update on the Wilderness Boss rework. <coughs> so, originally they planned the, for this section to be able to build Wilderness Boss rework, scheduled for next week game update. Unfortunately, yesterday they made a difficult decision to delay the release until 2023. So, while this may be disappointing to some, this will be coming uh, just at a different time. Uh, they do apologize to everybody who has been anticipating this update. Uh, but they do hope that everybody uh, understands that they want to have some more testing uh, being done for this. So that is why there's a delay. Next week in old school with the unfortunate news above, next week update may not be as hefty as they imagine. So they do want to commit to giving uh, something, a small taste of what are, what's to come as possible. So there is some stuff coming up next week. Uh, from poll 77 so do keep that in mind uh, do check out the merch store of course there's a bunch of cool new shirts I personally I'm thinking about getting some myself and there's also a bunch of awesome stuff from angelscapes as well and then PvP world road is moving to period a which is 539 US PvP 548 Germany high-risk PvP 577 US free to play PvP 559 UK LMS competitive World 390 AUS LMS competitive is activated with this rota, and the PvP arena is using the pure loadouts in the ranked duels and tournaments this week. Thank you for bearing with all this information this week, guys. So thank you guys so much for watching, and until next time, later, guys.